This is my favorite time of the year. I love Halloween season and Dia de los Muertos. It's just a really interesting time of year that worldwide is recognized as the time of year when the veil between our conscious existence and the spiritual realm is the thinnest. And that's why in the uh, Mexican tradition of Dia de los Muertos, that's the time we celebrate our ancestors because that's the time when they can come back to visit us. It's not so different in other parts of the world. Certain religious influences have made that out to be something evil, but in ancient times around the world, that was not considered an evil time of year, but rather a joyous time of year. So to learn more about Dia de los Muertos, Take a look at my video called Death Party Time to learn about the tradition of Dia de los Muertos and where that came from and how it's to be celebrated. But in the meantime, I love to do Story Times podcast uh, with scary stories from the American Southwest at this time of year. So today I'm going to read one account of La Llorona. I, I, have, I have a soft spot, spot in my heart for this really, really scary story because <laughs> I grew up in Arcata, California, Northern California, Humboldt County. And so it's really foggy up there. And when I was in high school, my boyfriend uh, took me on a drive out near, kind of near the, the bay or near, the, near a river that was near the ocean. And we sat on the hood of his little red convertible and <laughs> it was dark and misty and he we looked out into the darkness into the fog and he told me the story of La Llorona and I remember being scared out of my wits at this story it was so creepy and I really love it I love that memory it was really fun in fact do you know what so I, I kind of want to do a shout out to that guy his name is Pepe Pena he was one of the most beloved people in our school just the best best nicest guy and you could actually throw him some love he's um he's on a tv show right now he's um he's plays deputy mo poppernack i think it's called on the show big sky he's on season three of big sky as like one of the regular characters um check him out he's the best person ever absolutely nothing but love for him. So anyway, this is a version of La Llorona that was written by an author named Antonio R. Garces. He is an ethnographer and story collector of the American Southwest. Guadalupe and La Llorona. It happened one hot day in 1931 when I was with my brothers and a few neighborhood friends to the Santa Fe River. Even though it was four miles away, we didn't mind the walk because we knew that the refreshing cool river awaited us. Before leaving, I gathered up my white puppy, Peewee, who had been sleeping in the shade of a pinion tree, and then ran to catch up with the others. When we reached the river, my brothers began throwing small stones into the swirling eddies. I placed Peewee on the ground and joined in the game. After a few minutes, the sun beating down on my exposed head made me nauseous, and I thought I sought shade under some nearby willow trees. My puppy joined me as I dug up the reddish-brown mud from the water's edge to make mud people. I fashioned the bodies out of mud, used, used twigs for the arms and legs, leaves for dresses, and small flat stones for boys' hats. I could see and hear my brothers and their friends laughing and carrying on, but I was content to play house with my mud dolls and my puppy. Suddenly, while I was arranging the dolls in a circle, a strong gust of wind enveloped me and the surrounding cattails and tall weeds swayed violently. Then I heard the sweet, tinkling sound of bells. Captivated by the ringing, I stopped playing and listened to the bells. As I turned to tell my brothers about the bells, I noticed they had also heard the sounds, for they were standing silently just gazing at the sky. The sound of the bells got louder and louder, and my puppy that stood at my side began to bark and then ran off into a large clump of cattails. I tried to go after him, but discovered that I could not move a muscle. I was mesmerized by the sound of the bells for at least a full minute. 
then the tinkle of the bells subsided, and in the sudden silence I heard a woman gently sobbing and calling, Miha! Miha! Daughter! Daughter! Suddenly I was able to move, so I stood up and called to my brothers. They rushed to my side and took me by the hand. From the feeling of fear that gripped me, I knew this was something evil. We all raced home. I soon learned that my brothers and the other children had also heard the woman crying and beseeching, but to them she called out, Mis hijos, mis hijos, my sons, my sons. Once I was safe at home, I realized I had lost my puppy and I cried because I was certain it had drowned. After we explained what had happened, my mother said we had done the right thing by leaving. From what we had told her, she believed something evil had happened. My parents decided to make a visit to the spot where we had heard the weeping. I was apprehensive about returning, but at the same time, I was anxious to find my puppy. As my father was getting the horses ready, I heard my mother attempting to whisper to him, La Llorona, the weeping woman. When we arrived at the river, the sun was hanging heavy and tired in the western sky, and as we approached the river's edge, we all heard the woman's voice and felt the sense of urgency as she cried loudly for her children, Mis hijos! Mis hijos! My father called out to her, Quien es? Donde estas? Que quieres? Who are you? Where are you? What do you want? He received no reply, so my mother shouted, Deje a mis hijos solos, hija del demonio. Leave my children alone, daughter of the devil. Then she made the sign of the cross and called to us, Vámonos, let's go, and off we went. But in our haste, my mother's horse, which she and I were riding, tripped, and I fell off into the mud, hands first. As both of my parents came to help me, one of my brothers shouted for us to look at the river. We all turned and saw the smoky apparition of the woman walking toward us with her arms outstretched. The setting sun had cast a deep red orange gold glow on the river and we clearly saw this woman walking on its surface. My father yelled for us to hurry and we quickly made our way back home. As soon as we got back, my parents alerted the neighborhood to the danger at the river. They told everyone what we had witnessed and warned people to keep a close watch on their children. Most people think La Llorona makes her presence known only at night, but I am here to tell everyone that evil can choose any time to come forth. To this day, I clearly recall that phantom woman walking on the water and crying for her children. <laughs>